92. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Add the puck for a moment, but they give it back. We apologize for the technical difficulty uh, with the sound as Ahmed Mafuz, the head coach turned player for a couple of games this season, sends it around to the far side boards. Cangelosi knocks the puck away for Carolina. Dominic Fate sends it around the boards, but the line will be held by Carson Vance, a newcomer to this Elmira team. 
Dominic Fate pins up his man on the half wall. Elmira takes it in the form of Shinkarik, who moves it out to the far side boards. Walter with a shot through traffic, blocked on the way through. Elmira has it behind the net. Shinkarik backhands it around the far kick plate, taken away by Zach White, making only his third pro start. Had two games with Fayetteville a couple of years ago and spent last season in the France 2 League with Cholet. Quinn on his backhand gives to Dominic Fate, but he turns it over. Coming back to get it is Brendan Hussey. Looks to move it low. It's Gonzalez driving to the net. Rap chance sticked away by Quinn. George Holt has the puck for Carolina. Begging your pardon, it's Josh Keplinger. Up the near boards to Jan Salak. Salak gives to Keplinger in the middle. He holds for a wrist shot. Off a stick on the way through as Gino Mini blocked the shot. Back behind the net, Keplinger stood up, and Elmira will skate it up Broadway. Now to the near side boards. Toted into the zone by Everett Thompson, the former Carolina Thunderbird, who gets it into the near side corner. We're going to get the game's first penalty. It's going to go against Pashtuka as he wedged his man, Glenn Patterson, awkwardly. Touched by Peter Panachik. And it'll be Yuri Pashtuka to go to the box. Carolina will go a man down here with 16-28 remaining in the first period. Carolina had the top penalty kill in the league last season, but Pashtuka will take the penalty here, and the Thunderbirds will go a man down. Boarding the call as it's dumped low and picked up by Elmira off the far side boards. Now up to the top, Shinkarik gives near face off circle. A quick snap wrister, a right on goal by Marcus Ortiz, the former Port Huron Prowler. Never actually played a game with Port Huron as Carolina gets it back out. Spent most of his time in the SPHL with Macon and Roanoke. Skated ahead by Elmira, dumped in by Mafus, but he gave it away. It goes off the body of Ethan Bush Anderson, who will regroup for Carolina. Looked like he may have blown a tire, and now just has to wrist it off the near glass and all the way down the length of the ice. Picked up behind the net by Shin Carrick. He gives across to Marcus Ortiz, who will skate it out of his own zone, and now fires a cross ice pass to Mafus. He works from the near boards through center as he gives... The puck ahead to Mitch Atkins, who played with Elmira for only three games last year before being shipped off to Danville. Shinkarik regroups at center and gives to Mafuz. He gets slew-footed by George Holt, and there will be a penalty out at center, and we'll see what's going to be the call here. A very awkward collision that both referees had immediately. And this could be kneeing or slew footing, but either way, a suboptimal start to this one for Carolina. And it is going to be a two-minute kneeing penalty on George Holt with 15-13 to go in the first period. Carolina will be down two for the next 45 seconds. That was a good move by Ahmed Mafus that he made right there at the red line, and Holt got stuck flat-footed and just widened the stance and got a piece of Mafus. Critical point in the game, less than five minutes in, and a good start to it for Carolina's Panachik wins the faceoff all the way down the length of the ice. That'll force Elmira to regroup. 35 seconds to go in the five-on-three. To the point, Elmira sets it up. Carson Vance between the face-off circles at the blue line. Walks to the far side, passes low Mafuz. Searching things out, gives to Shinkarik, cutting through the middle. He fumbles it, and it ends up making its way out of the blue line. A free clear for Carolina. Ortiz regroups from center to Mafuz down the far side boards. Cuts into the face-off circle, lifts one over top the net, catches the glass into the netting and out of play with 11 seconds to go in the five-on-three. 14-39 to go in the first period. Ahmed Mafuz had a lot of space to walk from the far face-off circle and just lifted it over top of Zach Quinn, who is immediately under fire. Mafuz sitting on 841 career points. That's an all-time FPHL record for Mafuz, who is playing in his 11th season in the league. In fact, Mafuz won the first Commissioner's Cup back in 2011 with the Aquasosny Warriors. He's then spent time with the Port Huron Prowlers 
and was really the linchpin that helped build the Elmira Enforcers organization. He's also the head coach, just suited up today, so assistant coach Paul McLean is handling the head coaching duties on the bench. Mafuz takes the puck at the far side face-off circle. Two seconds to go in the five-on-three. Shinkarek winds and fires off the shin of Salak. It may have stung him. Into the near side corner, Jurich fires one toward the net. Knocked away by Stan Bacor. He sends it out to center off Shinkarek. It bounces around, and Salak will finish the job all the way down the ice, where Troy Passingham will have to set things back up for Elmira. 55 seconds left to kill in the George Holt kneeing minor. Jurich overtaken. Here's a chance. Tommy Sikos shorthanded to the backhand. Off the goal post. Oh, he shoveled it around of Troy Passingham, but he caught the outside iron, and the puck stays out early. Here's a pass to Vance. Now to Jurich. His wrist shot goes wide. Up to the top, Carson Vance. Sends it off the near side boards, collected by Mafuz as he has it at the far side dot. Into the middle, a one-timer pushed just wide by Brandon Tucker lurking in front. Now Jurich at the near dot, passed to the slot, backhanded toward the goal by Glenn Patterson as he got taken down hard, slow to get up in the far face-off circle. Puck goes to the near side point, Carson Vance. Gives to Jurich at the near face-off circle. Between the dots, hard slap shot from Vance. Kicked out with a purpose by Quinn. Panacha clears it all the way down. Carolina will go back to even strength unscathed. A headman look to Glenn Patterson from his goaltender Passingham. He's overtaken at the blue line as this will just be dumped in. Quinn catches it but will play it out behind the net to Stan Bacor. He passes to the far point where Zach White has it. A pass to the near corner. Cangelosi turned over by White. Here's a snap wrister swallowed by Zach Quinn. Last season, Zach Quinn, solid net minder coming out of Wisconsin River Falls in a difficult University of Wisconsin heavy conference. 13-8-2 with a 2-2-0 goals against average and a 9-2-5 save percentage. You won't find better stats than that coming out of an NCAA Division III school. River Falls is a stacked defensive team, but Quinn has played games all four of his years in college and then had the one game in Peoria last year. So good to see guys like that getting a chance in the FPHL. Quinn actually went to Pensacola during the week last week on a loan, but quickly made his way back to Carolina. Two on two, the Thunderbirds bring it into their attacking zone. White holds for a wrist shot in and out of the glove of Passingham as he bobbled it, and Kyler Matthews tries to clear, hits a stanchion on the far side of the ice and deflects over to the near side. Gino Mini run into by Tommy Cardinal, the French-Canadian. Elmira will have to settle things down behind their net. 12.30 to go in the first period. Carolina zero, Elmira zero. Skated ahead across the red line by Kyler Matthews. He dumps it in down the far boards. Zach Quinn out of his net to play the puck. He shoots it back around the far dasher. Picked up there by White, who looked for Tommy Cardinal, but missed him too far with a pass. So the puck bounces between the face-off circles in Elmira ice. Picked up there by the enforcers. Moved ahead to Mitch Atkins on the near boards at center, but he loses it, and Stan Bacor takes it for Carolina. Shoots a pass to the far red line, but it's intercepted, and Carolina has to reset in their defensive zone. Passed up the near boards to Panachik. Tried to leave it for Salak, but he was run in too hard by Matthews as the puck jostles around at center. Salak sends it out to the far boards. Panachik dumps it in as he gains the blue line. A bouncing puck swept to the near corner by Kyler Matthews, and now Elmira stuck in a breakout situation. A headman look to Brandon Tucker. Skates it ahead on the far boards, gets it outside of the blue line, and nearly turned over at center, but Elmira regroups. Tucker crosses with a pass out to the right wing, shot on net, and covered by Quinn. This is one of the keys to the game we talked about as Elmira wanted to go on the attack early, but they were unable to capitalize on a critical special teams opportunity earlier on in the period. So that means Carolina is going to feel like they have a little bit of momentum, just not enough to get it going. Carolina being outshot 8-4 to four as we near the halfway point of this period. Face-offs won by Elmira. Here's a long shot through traffic by Mafuz, sticked away by Quinn. Carolina gets to the rebound as Fred Hine pokes it wide for Jacob Bull. 
the Danish defenseman backhands it up the far boards off the shin pad of Seacos. Elmira takes over. Carson Vance with a tape-to-tape -tape pass ahead to Mafuz, who had it at the attacking blue line between the face-off circles. A quick reset move as he gives to Ortiz, who ties up George Holt. He's able to get it to Bowl. Fumbles with a puck for a moment. He gives ahead to Seacos, who touched it for Fred Hine as he tried to cross the blue line, but the pass ran too far for him, and Elmira will reset things. George Holt goes back behind the net to grab it as he sends it out for Jacob Bowl in the far side corner. Holt takes it back behind his net. Now slides it along the kick plate to Bowl. Stick handles once and moves it up the far boards. Sikos cuts into the middle of the ice, looking to gain the blue line. Had a screen from Batita as he skates it into the zone, and he'll go get his own clear in attempt. Sikos holding on to it, moves it up for Dominic Fate. He winds and fires off the skate of Marcus Ortiz, and it's two on two back the other way. Ortiz laid out by Dominic Fate at the red line. That forces a turnover, and Yuri Pashtuka has it. Blows a tire, but hangs on to it. What a move. Gets to the far side boards as he enters the zone to Fred Hine, who whiffs on the slap shot. The Elmira bench gets a kick out of that. As that's one that'll make the blooper reel. Hine going after the puck here to Dominic Fate. Shot through traffic, tipped over top the net as Zach White creating the traffic in front. Pashtuka turns to Cangelosi. He's got space from the far circle. Shot tipped on goal. Good stop by Passingham. His best of the game with the blocker. Cardinal. Knocked down on the play by Ortiz, but he gets it to the point in Pashtuka. Has it at the far blue line. Now pass across the ice. Fate winds and fires. Misses wide of the net with a slap shot. It bounces to the far side, and it's skated ahead. Here's a chance for Brendan Hussey. Carries it across the blue line, far side. Gets hit by Bush Anderson as the puck jostles free. Elmira will hang on. Patterson pinching with a shot that Quinn never saw. It missed him wide on the glove side. Carolina gets back to it as Bush Anderson gives up to White, and he'll backhand it out into open space. Patterson will take it there for Elmira as he works it back down the near side boards. Drops a pass to Hussey who winds and fires off the blocker of Quinn. Patterson sweeps it back toward the front of the net. It'll be covered by Zach Quinn, and that will take us to our very first commercial break. You're listening to Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey on WTOB. You're watching on Thunderbirds TV. Conveniently located at the corner of Ronalda Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schoaf is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schoaf is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Mustard and Crutchfield Food Market, family owned and operated in Kernersville since 1938. By American Elevator Company, providing North Carolina with the best in custom design residential elevators. By Best Western. And by High Rock Waterproofing, waterproofing and restoration specialists. For those of you on the TV side of things, you get a look at Burt Myers and the retired Junior Miller as it's nearly time to ramp up racing season again in Winston-Salem. Hockey business to deal with here, though, as Carolina wins the faceoff in their defensive zone. 9.02 to go in the first period. Still scoreless between Carolina and the Elmira Enforcers. Carolina killed off a 5-on-3 disadvantage early in the contest, and since then things have evened out, although the enforcers are out shooting Carolina 11-5, and that'll draw some ire from the head coach, Andre Nitsch. Quinn sweeps it around the far side boards. Kyler Matthews will take it at center on the far kick plate for Elmira. Sweeps a pass to the near side for Gino Minnie, who retreats into his defensive zone and nearly turned it over. Line held for a moment by Stan Bacor as he kicks it to Jan Salak down the near boards. You see it come into your living room. Salak with a bouncing puck. Couldn't hang on to it, but it's smacked at by Bacor, who's had a good shift with a couple of keeps. Mini will backhand it to his defense partner, and Elmira is going to think better of trying to rush things and begin the setup from their defensive zone. Skated ahead methodically by Atkins, who gives near side to Gino Mini, who couldn't dump it in around the big body of Jan Salak. So Carolina making it difficult for Elmira to enter the zone. Another sweep check, now a chance, but it's knocked off the stick of Tyler Jurich, who just recently scored his 200th career goal in the FPHL. Line change coming for Carolina, 
as the Batita line makes their way onto the ice. Into the zone comes Shinkarik as he ducks a hit from Jacob Bowl and goes into the far side corner. Carolina is the first team to it. To Tommy Seacos. Passes to Fred Hine as he comes down the near side wing. At the faceoff circle. Lays it ahead. Passing him. Kicks it aside. Now a chance for Mafuz as he's in alone. But the pass ran too far behind him for him to be able to hang on to. Mafuz just has to sweep it off the side of the goal. Carolina unable to clear. Carson Vance. Throws it into the zone where Mafus will take it. Up to the near boards. And a pass to Vance is bobbled and eventually makes it sway out to the neutral zone. JT Walters lays it forward for Shinkarik. He tried to knock it back, but Seco is causing a problem on the play. Elmira is able to regroup to Mafus as he has it near wing. Slides a pass across the ice to Carson Vance, who just clubs it down the far boards and into the zone. Quinn out of his net to play it, sweeps it near side. Batita with a pass to center, caught by Zach White as he backhands it into the zone, but Elmira will have it on their blue line, scattered ahead of the red line, and dumped in down the far wing. Dominic Fate jockeying for body positioning on Blake Peavy, and he'll end up taking the puck behind his net. Fate from the defensive far side faceoff circle with a pass to the near dot, and Yuri Pashtuka. From the blue line, he'll start his engine. Pashtuka with a move, lays it off the side of the goal as passing him was out and challenging. Now a chance on the far goal post as it's Tommy Cardinal poking at it, swept toward Cangelosi. He couldn't get a handle to the puck as Zach White gets run over on the far side boards. We'll keep playing with six minutes to go in the first period. Still scoreless between Carolina and Elmira. Dumped into the zone as going back to get it is Kyle Gonzalez, the product of Northland College, who skated last season with the Danbury Hat Tricks. One of the six hat tricks loaned to Elmira. This is Josh Keplinger down the near wing and into the near corner. Circles around the net. Has Bush Anderson calling for it at the point, but he lost his stick, and Elmira will fork it the length of the rink. Carolina resets, trying to get the puck at center. Taken away by Kyler Matthews in the Elmira defensive zone. He can't get around Keplinger. Bats to the front. Salak, now to Panachik, shovels it off the pad of Passingham. A good save with a glove side leg pad as Carolina starting to show signs of life. This one is dumped in by Brandon Tucker on net to Quinn. He'll catch it and hang on. We remind you that tomorrow the Carolina Thunderbirds will take on the Elmira Enforcers for game two of the season and game two of the week, 7.05 right here on Thunderbirds TV. Pre-game coverage will begin on WTOB and WAME at 6.35 p.m. An awkward face-off win for Elmira as the puck butterflied in on to Zach Quinn. He blockers it away and Carolina begins the breakout. Bowl to Sikos, who skates from the far wing to the near side and dumps it in as he gains the red line. To the near corner, Kyler Matthews in his defensive zone looks at Tyler Jurich on the far side. The pass ran off his stick and is eventually taken by Elmira. Here's a backhander shoveled high by Mitch Atkins, and it will make the netting out of play. 4.47 to go first period, Enforcers 0, Thunderbirds 0. A huge thank you to the Elmira Enforcers engineering crew for sharing their camera feeds with us. First time we've done a road broadcast on the television side of things. You can follow along, Carolina Thunderbirds TV on YouTube. But a huge thank you to the engineer Rick and play-by-play -play voice John Clement for accommodating us here. Tremendous professionalism by this organization. Carson Vance with a slapper off the draw. This one runs well high of Quinn, and Carolina has it. Bowl dumps it in behind the net. Passingham has it run off his backhand. Vance has to grab the puck for Elmira as he sends it up the near boards. Held for a moment by Ortiz as he spins out of a body check and gives it to Shinkarik. Two on two as they cross the line. Now the trailer Vance couldn't get to the puck in time. Sends it around the end boards. Jacob Bowl run into hard by Ahmed Mafuz as Carolina will get back to the puck here. This is Hine, now John Batita. Skates it ahead as he works his way into the zone. Turns and fires a shot that goes off of a body. Hine backhands it toward the net. Passingham makes the save. Mafus sweeps it to the near side boards. Ortiz run into hard by Dominic Fate. This is Zach White with the puck. 
as he moves it up ice, crossing the red line. White with an opportunity, but it's swept away at the last second. We've got a delayed penalty. This is going to go against Elmira. And a hooking call against the enforcers will send Carolina to the power play. 3.37 to go in the first period. Hooking the call against Marcus Ortiz. Carolina's power play last season operated at an even 20%. That was good for sixth in the FPHL. And they'll look to draw first blood here, but not a great start to the power play as Elmira wins the draw and clears it the length of the rink. They'll kill the first 10 seconds of this one. Pashtuka slides it ahead to Cangelosi. And he'll retreat back behind of Zach Quinn. Cangelosi pauses for a moment and has to retreat. Looks at Pashtuka as Andre Nitsch wants his team to hustle. This is Tommy Cardinal with the puck. To the near side, Pashtuka, but he loses it, and Cangelosi will have to take over. Has it between the dots. Works to the near side boards. Cangelosi winds and fires. Blockered away by Passingham. The rebound scooped up by Carolina. White gives to Fate, who sends it across to Bacor. Now White in the middle. Backhands a pass intended for Cardinal. Blocked away, but Cardinal recovers. No clear for Elmira. His pass to the far dot. Intercepted, but not out. Bacor holds the line. Diving, but unable to get the puck out, was Brandon Tucker. Walters cannot get it out. Bacor holds the line. Cangelosi to Bacor near side. Now a chance, Keplinger, his wrist shot punched out by Passingham. Good chances for Carolina. Now Salak right up Broadway, a wrister blocked, clubbed out of the zone, touched with a high stick by Bacor, and the faceoff will come back down into Carolina defensive ice. 31 seconds to go on the power play, 2.08 to go in the period. Carolina had chances there, but thus far not a whole lot going for the Thunderbirds on the power play. Good effort to hold the puck there, though. Faceoff is won by Carolina as they'll move it ahead. This is Keplinger who carries it into the zone. Knocked down, but Salak will come back and get the puck for the Thunderbirds as they'll send it up and ahead. This one is backhanded into the zone as PV will kill time, and that should just about do it for the Carolina power play. Panachik skates it ahead as he backhands it to the near boards. Panachik has it, drops to Salak. It was knocked away by Patterson. Carolina's going to get it back, though, behind the net. Panachik holding and looking, still hanging on to it, to the far boards. Now zips a pass to Keplinger, off angle shot, passing him, seals it off, and will cover with a minute 22 to go in the period. 0-0, Elmira and Carolina in the first period of this one. The Thunderbirds have crawled back to even the shots on goal at 12-12. Face off to the glove side of Passingham, won by Elmira. They're able to get it out, but George Holt holds body position to prevent an odd man rush. Elmira dumps it in. They were behind the red line. This is icing. There's one thing you don't want to do against Carolina. You do not want to give them late period chances. So the face off will come all the way back down to Passingham's end. Face-off will be to the blocker side of the Elmira netminder. One by Tommy Sikos. And Elmira will just try to get it out. They do. Bowl was an inch too short to keep it in, and he'll pitch fork it ahead. Minute to go in the frame. Still scoreless between Carolina and Elmira. The pass goes out to the far side, and now Elmira will work it near boards. Vance 
ahead to Tyler Jurich. Sidesteps his man, throws it toward the net, pushed just wide. Taken back by Mitch Atkins, who's run into by Holt, but got it loaded. Jurich sends it. That might have hit the crossbar or the mask of Zach Quinn, but nonetheless, it stays out. 30 seconds to go in the period. Pass near side. Vance hammers it into the zone. Jacob Bowl goes around to get it. He runs into Marcus Ortiz and knocks him down, and Carolina will have it. 20 seconds to go in the period. Hine with a cross-corner dump in to the near side boards. Now a head man look for Elmira. Just chipped into the zone. 10 seconds remaining. Hustling to get there is Mafuz. Sidesteps Dominic Fate. Turn toward the slot, knocked away by the skate of Pashtuka. Five seconds to go. Patterson winds and fires a wrist shot through traffic, blocked away, and that is where the period will end. Chances for both sides in that first period of play, but nobody is able to solve the enigma of the two goaltenders as Quinn has his first period in with 13 saves and Troy Passingham has his end with 12. We'll pause for this commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll turn your attention to a couple critical stats and figures. This is Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey. Conveniently located at the corner of Ronalda Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schoaf is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schoaf is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana. Gear up and practice at our pro shop and 9,000 square foot putting green. And enjoy a round of golf on our 18 hole Ellis Maples designed championship golf course. Learn more about us and our memberships at maplechasecc.com. Family owned and operated since 1938, Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher, enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville. What is a Thunderbird? It's toughness, grace, poetry in motion. Third score! It's a family, a brotherhood, a flock 4,000 strong. A Thunderbird is fierce, passionate, and never stops working. There's a championship pedigree here, a legacy to protect flock together. Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Pepsi, the taste born in the Carolinas. By Nova Credit Union. By Pierce Jefferson Funeral and Cremation Services, helping Forsyth County connect, honor, and remember. And by Salem Smiles the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina and Thunderbirds. And we welcome you back inside of First Arena in Elmira, New York. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Drew Blevins with you as the Carolina Thunderbirds are all knotted up with the Elmira Enforcers through 20 minutes. 0-0, an auspicious beginning for Carolina, though, as they took two 
penalties nearly back-to-back and gave Elmira an opportunity for 45 seconds with a five-on-three. No better way to get introduced to FPHL hockey for Zach Quinn than to have to be equal to those challenges early on. Quinn ends his period 13 for 13, a majority of those shots coming on the five-on-three for Elmira. For the enforcers, though, this has got to be a mind boggling problem now two for 19 in the season on the power play and that's something this team is going to need to correct almost immediately if they want to remain competitive you knew coming in that Elmira was going to be a team that was going to be hard-nosed and was going to play a style of hockey that lent itself toward a much more defensive looking group as we told you in the pregame show in only three prior meetings have the enforcers scored three or more goals against Carolina. It's shaping up to be another one of those meetings, and if you're the Thunderbirds, you're going to feel good about getting better throughout the period, but there was still a lot that needed to be changed. Shots on goal that period total 13-12 in, uh, in favor of the Elmira enforcers. The saves are the same but inverse, 13 for Carolina and 12 for Elmira. The power play for the Enforcers goes 0 for 2. Carolina goes 0 for 1 on the penalty to Ortiz for hooking midway through the frame. Surprisingly, though, I didn't feel like either team took a lot of momentum. It was a slow period. It was a methodical period. And I'm looking forward to see what the second brings for both of these teams. I thought Carolina came out just a little bit timid in the early going, and then Dominic Fate laid a hit on Ahmed Mafuz on the near side boards as he was bringing the puck into the zone. That's when Carolina got themselves inserted into the game, and oddly enough for a team that is loaded with offensive skill, including a handful of SPHL caliber guys, it's Dominic Fate, the longtime FPHL defenseman, who makes the play to inject new life into this Carolina Thunderbirds group and a lot of energy came out of Carolina. They had nine shots on goal through the final 12 minutes of the period and that's something Andre Nitsch will want to keep hammering on. Shots on Detroit passing ham is the only way you're going to beat this young man consistently. We're step aside for a quick commercial break. If you're watching on TV, we hope you enjoy one of our new episodes of Kids Sticks. Every week we'll be highlighting a new hockey fundamental on Thunderbirds TV and we hope you'll enjoy this week's fundamental, which will be shooting, notably the wrist shot. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. There are four major shots in hockey. The wrist shot, the snap shot, the backhander, and the slap shot. Today, our kid stick focus will be on the first one, the wrist shot, the most common shot in the game of hockey, and one a lot of the Carolina Thunderbirds use to score goals. Let's start by looking at the anatomy of the wrist shot. The setup starts like this. Now you'll have to recognize, in a game you won't point your toe, but it's important for you to see that all weight is on the back foot to start your wrist shot. The front foot should have no weight on it except to balance. The other thing is, the puck will be positioned behind your back foot. This will allow you to load for more power in your wrist shot. As you come forward, the puck will come with you and your weight will shift with it. Like that. Now if you'll notice, there's a little bend in the stick right at my knee. That's called flex. That's the measurement of how much or how little the stick will bend during a shot. You'll also see that my back foot is almost completely off the ice. That shows the weight transfer. Let's look at it from the front to get a better idea. The puck goes back in my stance, I bring my weight forward, and I flick the puck. Now, that's not bad for a play-by-play -play broadcaster, but look at the toe of my stick. 
It's not pointed where I want it to go. So let's look at our next fundamental, the hands. Your top hand will function like a lever, pulling back on the top part of the stick towards your chest as you're shooting. Your bottom hand will work as a flip over to go across the stick, across your body to point the toe of the stick. Watch this. See how I pull back to start the shot and my bottom hand comes across and flips over. That creates power and accuracy. Now have a look at the puck. The puck starts at the back or the heel of my stick. Watch as I bring it forward how it moves toward the front of the stick or the toe. See? As I'm about ready to release the puck, it's already midway down my stick. I'm going to slow down my release that much more so you can see it come all the way to the toe. Now let's put all of our fundamentals together. Weight back, puck back, I come forward with it, flick the wrist, transfer my weight, and finish. That's a good goal. This is what it looks like in real time. Remember, having a good wrist shot is something that takes time. If you ever need more help, remember the fundamentals. But ask your coach or your parents what you can do to better improve your wrist shot, and you'll be sniping goaltenders in no time. For Kid Sticks and the Carolina Thunderbirds, I'm Drew Blevins. We hope you enjoyed our very first episode of Kid Sticks on Thunderbirds TV. Tune in next week to find out what our next fundamental will be. It could be anything from how to eat healthy and preparing your right pregame snacks to something as simple as taping your stick. And, of course, we'll be back on the ice, hopefully, with some of your favorite Thunderbirds players and coaches. That's been a fun project to work on, and we most certainly hope you enjoyed it. We also hope you've enjoyed the first period of this one as we're nearing uh, the end of the intermission break, about seven and a half minutes away from puck drop on period number two. Carolina with a strong effort on the penalty kill. That was the biggest moment of that first period, and hopefully for Carolina, that momentum carries into the second. For Elmira, a good job on their penalty kill. They kept Carolina at bay largely on the perimeter, but the other thing for Carolina is for a team that hasn't been together all that long, finding the right rhythm on the man advantage is going to be something that team wants to do uh, to maintain their own set of offensive opportunity. Zach Quinn, solid in net. For Carolina, I thought Troy Passingham had to scramble to make a couple of saves, but you know what you're getting when you're facing a goaltender like Passingham. You're getting somebody who is going to make a lot of timely saves for you, a big goaltender. The key to scoring on him is to get him moving. Quinn quickly proving his own medal. As keep in mind, Carolina still has Austin Rodebush on their roster, but right now he is playing in the SPHL with the Knoxville Ice Bears, gaining Stepan Timofeyev as a teammate here in mere minutes as Timofeyev was called to Knoxville this morning, leaving the Elmira roster. I think you start to see Elmira deplete a little bit as they go down the stretch in the third period. A couple of new line combinations with how many guys are out. Three due to COVID-like symptoms, precautionary holdouts for Elmira, and a couple of undisclosed concerns. One healthy scratch in Marco Novacell. We'll pause for a quick commercial break. Coming back on the other side, we'll give you the adjustments that need to be made and get you all teed up for period number two. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Conveniently located at the corner of Rinalda Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schof is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schof is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles.
Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana. Gear up and practice at our pro shop and 9,000 square foot putting green. And enjoy a round of golf on our 18 hole Ellis Maples designed championship golf course. Learn more about us and our memberships at maplechasecc.com. Family owned and operated since 1938, Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher, enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days, and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville. We welcome you back to First Arena in Elmira, New York, about three minutes away from puck drop of period number two, Enforcer 0, Thunderbird 0. Elmira outshoots Carolina 13-12, to but it was the Thunderbirds who dictated the pace of play across the last half of the first period, although they did go 0-1 for 1 on their power play opportunity. Something I'm looking for for Carolina to adjust on is clean zone entries. They've got to find a way to get the puck into attacking ice cleanly and create opportunities off the rush. Carolina didn't have an odd man rush in the first period, and if you're not creating opportunities like that against a good Elmira team, quite simply, you're not going to have many chances to score. Elmira's just that good defensively. Meanwhile, if you're the Elmira enforcers, you've got to find a way to capitalize on the opportunities you do create. A couple of two-on-twos, one three-on-two, and then the five-on-three power play yields nothing for the Elmira enforcers. This, this is a team that historically has been stunted offensively against a Carolina unit that prides itself on quality defense, but if Elmira wants to win tonight, they're going to have to step things up on the offensive side of the puck. Coming up on the other side of this break, it's puck drop of period number two between Carolina and Elmira. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. What is a Thunderbird? It's toughness, grace, poetry in motion. They score! It's a family, a brotherhood, a flock 4,000 strong. A Thunderbird is fierce, passionate, and never stops working. There's a championship pedigree here, a legacy to protect. Flock together. We welcome you back to Elmira, New York, as we're about ready to begin period number two here in Elmira. Score Carolina zero, Elmira zero. As the Thunderbirds look to draw first blood, no carryover penalties and or power plays. 
before this period. Elmira will be working from left to right across your radio dial. Carolina Thunderbirds will be going, or excuse me, Elmira will be going left to right. Carolina will be going from right to left. Face off from center is won by Carolina. But Elmira will take the puck and dump it in. Bacor gets to it in the near side corner. Atkins runs into him as the puck jostles free, and Elmira will settle it. This is Matthews with a shot through traffic, loose in the slot. Josh Keplinger is the first one to it, and he headbands the puck for Peter Panacic. Across the blue line, Panacic works wide, fires a wrist shot. Met stick to stick by Kyler Matthews, and that puck will head out of play. 19.34 to go in the second period. Still scoreless between Carolina and Elmira. Drew Blevins with you on the first road broadcast of Thunderbirds TV. We thank you for being patient and bearing with us as we work out the technical kinks. And as we go down the season here, it only gets better. But thank you so much for joining us both there and on our flagship radio station, WTOB 980 AM 96.3 FM. Elmira wins the draw and is able to get it out to center. It's taken away there by Tommy Sikos, who backhands to Holt. He'll punch it out to Fred Hine on the far boards. Gives to Petita cutting through center, but he loses the puck. Now Tyler Jurich has it on the near boards, has to kick it back to his defense, and Walters sweeps it across for Carson Vance. Elmira has it, lost it. Jurich gives it away to Seacoast. Pass in front, Batita had his stick lifted by Mitch Atkins. Sweeps it up for Jacob Bowl, who will lay it down the kick plate behind the net. Seacoast has it with a little space. Up to the point, Holt traps it on the kick plate, fires an off-angle shot that misses wide. Batita can't hold the line. This is going to roll on the fresh ice all the way down to Quinn's end, and Jacob Bowl will be the first one there. The Danish defenseman gave it away. Quinn has to track it and covers in the goal crease. 18.46 to go in the second period. Enforcer zero, Carolina zero. We'll do it all over again. Same time, same channel tomorrow night between Carolina and Elmira. First of nine meetings between the two teams this year. That's the most since the 2018-19 season where the teams faced off 16 times. Have to remember that was a full season with an FPHL that only had six teams. A takedown through center. This will be touched by Kyle Gonzalez, and Carolina will get their second power play of the night. This is going to be Ortiz to go again for tripping. 18.37 to go in the second period. Carolina will get another opportunity on the power play. 0 for 1 tonight. Face-off will be to the glove side of Passingham. And it's won by Shinkarik, but Holt jumps around his man and has the puck. He'll set things up below the goal line. Holt may have stick handled one too many times, works around of Walters and drops for John Batita. The Middleburg Heights native to Fred Hine. He winds and fires, tipped on the way through just wide. What a chance for Fred Hine. Taken away by Elmira. They'll send it all the way down as Brendan Tucker clears. Quinn out of his net to play it. Crafty stick handling move as he gave a little golf chip shot to Seacos, who will now skate it down the far board. Seacos cuts in, wrist shot off the catching side shoulder of, Hine, uh, of Passingham, and Hine with a rebound chance, shovels it wide. Behind the net, J.T. Walters, the former Thunderbird, takes it, and he'll wrist it down the length of the rink. Quinn will set things up for Carolina, another head fake, and he'll leave it for Hine with a minute gone by in the power play opportunity for Carolina. Hine crosses the blue line at the near side, fires a wrist shot off the stick of Walters, jumping in to hold the line as Bacor. A rolling puck ends up making its way out to center where Ethan Bush Anderson has it. More on him in a moment in his athletic ability. This is Bacor who gives to Peter Panacic. He skates it right up Broadway. Now cuts to the far side and will set things up on the power play. Panacic behind the net. Passes to Salak on the near wing. Had it swept away from him by Everett Thompson. And now two by two, they battle on the near side half wall. Thompson 
digging after the puck. Joined Elmira before their three preseason games against Watertown, and he's the one to forge ahead, not with possession, but will help his team kill time. Now to Stan Bacor as Carolina will regroup. Panacek touches to Salak, just 10 to go on the power play. Salak slides by Mafuz and sends it out wide for Panacek. Panacek to Salak, a one-timer just wide on the near side goal post. Elmira's got it. Here comes Carter Shinkarek as we return to five-a-side hockey. He works to the far face-off circle, a snap wrister off the outside of the goal. Rebound, squirts back out into the center of the ice, and Salak will skate it ahead of his defensive blue line. As Carolina looks to get off on a line change. Mafuz with a little head fake as he gives to Shinkarek down the near side wing. Cuts ahead of the blue line with a pass wide. Ortiz with a shot. It was going high, but Quinn, sensing the need for a whistle, will get one with 16-13 to go in the second period. Ethan Bush Anderson is the newest Thunderbird, only acquired this past week in the number six uniform. But he's not just a hockey player. He walked on to the basketball team at Alma College for a season and played Division III basketball, then decided, you know what, I want to give hockey a go, transferred to Northern Michigan and played for their ACHA team, and now finds himself playing pro hockey. He's played for four FPHL teams, and the delay is because Zach Quinn broke his goal stick. So Quinn has to get a new one from the bench I'm not sure if it got stepped on, skated over, but it broke right on the middle part of the paddle. Here's a shot through traffic by Elmira, kicked away by Quinn, and the rebound squirts out to the Thunderbirds. This is Batita down the near side boards. Tries to work his way around his man. Up to the point, Bowl had the pass hop over his stick as it works its way back out to center. Elmira out shooting Carolina 3-2 in the period. Carolina will set things up from behind of Quinn. Bowl works to the near side boards. Gives to Batita. Moves it up ice, crossing the blue line. Batita backhands it, looking for Tommy Sikos. Intercepted, and now Elmira will take over. This is Kyler Matthews. Had his stick lifted from behind by Sikos. Takes the puck away and gives to Cangelosi. Backhands to Fred Hine. Hine drops for Cangelosi, holds and fires an awkward wrist shot, blockered away by passing him. Mafuz gets to the rebound, sends it out to the far side corner, and Elmira will begin the breakout. Mishandled pass initially, and now Kyler Matthews will retreat behind of Passingham with 14.59 to go in the second period. We remain scoreless in this one. Shinkarik gives the puck across to Brandon Tucker who tried to dump it in, hit Cancelosi right in the crest of the uniform. He ended up knocking it to Jurich. His pass across the rink deflected initially by White, but Atkins gets to the puck and backhands it off the end boards. Jurich now sweeps into the middle, puck taken away by Carolina as Pastuka pokes it ahead. Carried into the zone by Tommy Cardinal who is hand checked by Tucker, forces him to dump it in. Walters now for Elmira to Jurich, chips it out barely beyond the blue line at center. Carolina will regroup there. On their own blue line, Pashtuka retreats, works around of Atkins, and gives back to Dominic Fate, who's had a good game so far. Really good to see the Prague Czech Republic native back and healthy. Fate missed 16 games last season due to various injuries and just really struggled to get back healthy. This is Jurich for Elmira to the top. Vance with a one-timer, tipped on the way through. Loose rebound, Hussey had it knocked away from him by a diving Joe Cangelosi in the slot. Now Hussey gives to the far face off circle. Vance holds, fires to Richter, he scores! Carson Vance draws first blood for Elmira with 13.53 to go in the second period. And it's the enforcers who have the first goal of the game. For Carson Vance, it'll be his first goal of the season. It's Carolina just as soon as it seemed like they were starting to build a little bit of momentum. They find themselves trailing by one. Vance will have credit for the goal. The Tempe, Arizona native 
skated with SUNY Oswego last year, had 16 points, only four of them goals. But the forward unit creates traffic in front. And Elmira has the first goal of the game. Moved quickly in front by Thompson, but he's unable to connect with the cutting Brendan Hussey, and Carolina is able to skate it back out. This is Bacor, who gives wide for Jan Salak to Keplinger, who touches near side for Panacic, skates ahead of the attacking blue line. Panacic zips it around the boards. Bacor unable to hold the line as this one's taken away by Elmira. It's two on one, pass to Gonzalez, knocked away by a back-checking Peter Panacic. Up the near boards, Gino Mini winds and fires, waffle boarded away by Quinn. Carolina's got it. Salak sidesteps the body check, pitchforks it ahead to Keplinger, who took the hit to make the play. Now Panacic, stick checked in the slot by Gino Mini, the former Battle Creek Rumblebee, to Shankarik, and now Mafuz on the breakaway. Great stop by Quinn. Robs Ahmed Mafuz on the breakaway with a catching side shoulder. It stays 1-0. Elmira in the driver's seat in the Carson Vance goal. Now Shin Carrick's got it. High slot, holds, looks, fires a wrist shot through traffic. Quinn says no. Big rebound. Carolina survives. This is Ortiz, shoved by Bowl. He'll run into him hard. A rolling puck comes up the near boards. Bettina had it for a moment and now completes the takeaway from Ahmed Mafuz to Tommy Sikos. These two were line mates in Quad City. Sikos gave to Bettina, but the pass was too far for him. And now here comes Elmira. It's Mafuz looking for Glenn Patterson. Thinks better of it. Fires a shot through traffic. Never made it to the net. Up the near boards, Pashtuka. Backhands it to Dominic Fate. Now to Pashtuka. Here he comes from the near faceoff circle. A wrist shot shut down and swallowed by Troy passing him. Pashtuka has only recently moved back to the blue line as a full-time defenseman. He is tied for the all-time leader in goals with the Berlin River Drivers, coached by Andre Nitsch, where he got his first 25 wins as a head coach. Drug Berlin, who made the playoffs on the last day of the regular season, grabbed them by their bootstraps and drug them to the final where they lost in the decisive fifth game to the Danville Dashers. Here's a shot by Sikos, caught and held on to by Passingham. Nitsch is very proud of that team, of course, coming to Carolina. Thunderbirds have made the playoffs in each of their years in, of existence. They lost their first two playoff games to Watertown. Both of those games went to overtime. Watertown won the championship in 2017-2018. If you're a Thunderbirds fan, you know the story of the magical 2018-2019 run. It looked like Carolina was destined to repeat last year before the COVID-19 pandemic shut things down. Carolina was the top seed in the FPHL, only team above 100 standings points. But alas, 359 days later, we get to resume hockey. Carolina trailing in this one, 11.25 to go in the second period as the Thunderbirds take the puck in the near corner. Pushtuka, backhands up for White. Jurich takes it away from him as spinning with it is Mitch Atkins, gives it to J.T. Walters, who sweeps it across for Vance, the goal scorer. Floats one on goal. Quinn will take it and swallow with 11.07 to go in the second period. 1-0 Elmira leading Carolina. Enforcers lead in shots on goal, 20-17. Troy passing him. He's had to make a couple of good saves, notably in the first period, a couple of scramblers, but he's been even to it. Didn't get to talk about Passingham much. A Mississauga, Ontario native who completed his collegiate career at Ryerson University last year. Had a 3-3-4 goals against average and a 9-1-6 save percentage. 19 wins as an enforcer. And he's the bread and butter goaltender. He's going to be the guy that starts the majority of these games. Although having Dylan Kelly as a backup is always a nice cushion. Shot from the point, misses wide of the far side goal post. Bush Anderson pokes to Salak. He gets tied up as he skated right into Carson Vance, who shoved him down. And Walters will take the puck for Elmira. Floats it ahead to Jurich, but it's intercepted, and Carolina will regroup in their own zone. Panacic gives it out to the far side as Bacor takes it. 
His pass ricocheted off a stick on the way through to Keplinger. Now Panacek near faceoff circle. His wrist shot blocked by Vance. The rebound of Butch Anderson. Shot through traffic. Tipped on goal. Good stop by Passingham. And the rebound makes its way to Jurich. He's run into by Bowl, who finishes the body. Turns it over to Peavy. Near side, Jurich at the faceoff circle. Feeds it through. One-timer. Oh, what a stop! Zach Quinn throws out the blocker side leg pad and commits robbery to keep it 1-0. It doesn't get any better than that from Zach Quinn. The Westland, Michigan native makes the best save of the hockey game to this point. What an FPHL debut for Zach Quinn. Peavy dumps it in. Holt was victimed, or victimized, I should say, by a rough bounce at Kareen's in front. Gonzalez tried to tuck it, or pardon, rather, Thompson was there. And it's sealed off by Zach Quinn. I invite you to scroll back on your YouTube feed and take a look at the save that keeps this one 1-0. 9.34 to go in the second period. We'll step aside for a quick commercial break. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Conveniently located at the corner of Ronaldo Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schoaf is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schoaf is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Walkabout Flooring, by Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company, try our vanilla coffee porter, now in special edition Thunderbirds cans, by American Water Damage, you relax, we rescue, and by Sharp Stone. We welcome you back to Elmira, New York, inside of First Arena. Drew Blevins with you. The Carolina Thunderbirds trailing the Elmira Enforcers 1-0 on a goal by Carson Vance. Not only his first goal, but his first point of the season. 9.34 to go in the second period. Vance's goal is the lone marker in the hockey game so far. Elmira out shooting Carolina 23-19 in this game to this point. Peavy will take the draw for Elmira against Tommy Seacos for Carolina. And it's won back by the enforcers to Gino Minnie, who feeds it low. Thompson with a backhand pass to the front. Good stop by Quinn. Elmira holds the line. A little roller made its way down to Peavy for a moment. He sends it off the inboards. Thompson pitchforks a shot toward the net that Quinn got a chest to. Now Shinkarik rolls it in on goal. Quinn says no with the goal stick. Backhanded up the near boards. Carolina struggling to get it out. Tommy Sikos will skate it from the near boards to the far side and just does get it ahead of the blue line. Taken down but gives the pass to George Holt who has it near blue line. Defensive side Carolina. Headman look for Hine. Fans on the shot. Drops for Batita. He spins with it. He fires just over top the net. Caught up on the skirting. Seacoast gets to it, throws it back into the middle, intercepted by a swarm of white and green, and here come the enforcers. Dumped into the zone, awkward one-timer by Shinkarik. Misses wide as he knuckled in the one-timer off the heel of his stick. As a goaltender, it's very difficult to judge those slow balls. Mafuz, crafty pass to Ortiz, has a man in front. Here's a wrister, Quinn. Got it with the cheater pad of the glove we play on. Moved up, intended for Tommy Cardinal, but Cangelosi's pass intercepted. Shinkarik deking Quinn equal to the challenge. Zach Quinn bailing his team out here in the middle of the second period. We stay 1-0. Pashtuka around the far kick plate. Jurich unable to hold it. He retreats through center. Pass near side. Gonzalez skates it into the zone for Elmira. Dumps it low to Jurich, who's tied up by Yuri Pashtuka behind the net. Pashtuka backhands it off the near boards. Chug chugging after it is Zach White. Tucker uses his reach to get it around him, but didn't get good wood. Now it's Tommy Cardinal. Gives a cross looking for White. Pass is blocked. Now Cangelosi blows a tire. Puck in front is covered by Passingham with Tommy Cardinal attacking. 
and will get a pause as Passingham melts it down. 7.43 to go in the second period. 1-0, the enforcers in the driver's seat of this one. Zach Quinn thus far has been the player of the game for the Carolina Thunderbirds. Hasn't been particularly close. 26 saves on 27 shots and a couple of gems. Product of the University of Wisconsin River Falls and a native of Westland, Michigan, about 30 minutes west of Detroit, informed me before morning skate today that when the team makes the trip to Port Huron March 19th, they'll go right through Westland. Dumped in by the enforcers, Jurich is the first man there. He'll yield to Mitch Atkins, who had the puck knocked away from him by Stan Bacor, and Carolina will bring it out. Jan Salak down the far wing, slides a pass in front looking for Panacek. Good recovery by JT Walters, the former Carolina Thunderbird, hair flapping in the breeze. This is Vance who gives to Jurich on the near wing, cross corner dump in, Bacor has it for Carolina. Here he comes, Bacor to Josh Keplinger, the Saginaw, Michigan native. Brings it in, fires a wrist, shot off, passing and big rebound! Passing him's turn to make the gem of a save as he keeps his team ahead one. Just got the glove side leg pad to the rebound in front with Salak attacking. Bush Anderson cannot hold the line. It's a chance two on one for Elmira. Jurich holds wide, lifts it across, they score. Brandon Tucker on the two on one makes it two nothing Elmira. Second assist of the evening for Tyler Jurich. And if you want to look at one of the plays that contributes to that goal, it's the save made by Troy passing him down here on the near end. Brandon Tucker has his second goal of the season from Jurich, who will have his second assist of the night. Carolina. Looking to get it back here as Seacoast tries to dump it down the far boards. Taken away initially. Carolina's got a touch for offside. They didn't realize it. Batita got his stick to the puck as Holt was unable to hold the line. Unusual situation for Carolina against Elmira. They very rarely find themselves trailing against this specific opponent. And if you'll Harken back to December 14th where Elmira eventually won in a shootout. Carolina had the lead in that game. And it was Elmira who tied it and eventually took it to the shootout and won. Batita, head of the blue line, floats one on goal, swallowed by Passingham. And this is where Elmira wants to play from. If they can get ahead, they know they have a good enough defensive unit where they can kind of sit back and just trap you in the third period. And with 5.55 to go in the second period, and Elmira up two for Ahmed Mafuz and Paul McLean, this is a very good sign. Jacob Bowl to Holt, his shot gloved by Passingham. The faceoff will go to the far dot in Carolina attacking ice. Only four seconds matriculate off the clock. And the thing is, it's not like Carolina has come out and laid an egg. They've had chances, but Troy Passingham has been very good. And I think that this bunker-style defense for Elmira has stymied a team that likes to get out in the open and run. Here's a shot. Scores! George Holt on a blast from the point. Cuts the deficit in half, and Carolina is on the board. That goal comes just 29 seconds of game time later, and it's George Holt to get the goal for the Carolina Thunderbirds. His first of the season off the faceoff win. Holt had eight last year. It'll be his 23rd career marker as George Holt is skating in his 101st career FPHL game. Pashtuka now for white one-timer. Passingham flashes leather as Carolina showing signs of new life. George Holt from Rochester Hills, Michigan. If you're sensing a theme, there are four players from Michigan 
on this Thunderbirds roster. Up to the top, Fate winds and fires, misses wide as the puck was up on edge. Pashtuka down the near boards, looking for Cangelosi behind the net. He blows a tire. Zach White runs into his man, forces a turnover at the blue line. Elmira cannot get it out. Here's a chance. White near side faceoff circle. Rister over top the crossbar. A chance for Zach White to get his first Thunderbirds goal. Dominic Fate lays a huge hit onto Marcus Ortiz. Elmira having to go back and recover on the puck now. Mafuz can't get to it as Pashtuka has it. He's hit by Carter Carrick, and Mafuz loses a stick on the play. Cangelosi, the goal, the goal line to White, who digs, backhander, passing and makes the save twice, three times, as he holds on with the blocker side leg pad, and Elmira survives. What a chance and what a shift for Zach White. Product of Curry College was the captain of the Colonel's team his senior year. The young man who played in France last year nearly had his first FPHL goal. Salak sweeps it into the zone. It's immediately thrown back by Walters, but Salak has it and gives to Josh Keplinger. Here comes the former Macon Mayhem member. Keplinger, Deeks, holds Rister off a body in the way through, up and out of play. 4.23 to go in the second period. Elmira 2, Carolina 1. Thunderbirds inches away from tying it. Salak, Panachik, Keplinger with Bacor and Bush Anderson, the unit for Carolina. Face-offs one forward. Panachik pushes ahead with it but couldn't get a clean shot off as he's tied up by Mitch Atkins. Gives low to Jan Salak, who has it on the far side boards. Gates it up to the hash marks. Now feeds it low to the far corner. That's where Keplinger takes it. Gives to Bush Anderson, who throws it into open space on the near corner. Salak looked low for Panachik. Taken away, it's Keplinger. Hangs onto it, gives Panachik one-timer, pushes it just wide. Bacor, after the puck, taken away from him by Brandon Tucker, but he poked it too far, and Bush Anderson has to take it. Backhands off the far boards. Carolina looks to regroup at center. Keplinger, Panachik, his one-timer, goes just wide of the net. Walters for Elmira. Brings it up the near side boards. Taken away by Jacob Bowl. This is Sikos. Has it for the Thunderbirds. Gives it into the middle. Chance for Hine. Swept at it, but missed it just wide. Dumped in as George Holt will go to get it for the Thunderbirds. To the near side boards. Taken up by Tommy Sikos. Has had the puck knocked away by Jake Peavy. Bowl out to the far side for George Holt. Gives up for Fred Hine. Turns and finds Jacob Bowl. He's crunched by Everett Thompson. Batita gives into the middle for Hine. Intercepted. Could be a chance for Peavy, but it's knocked away from him by John Batita. 2.29 to go in the second period. 2-1 enforcers leading the Thunderbirds. Pinned on the back of the net, and we'll get a whistle. 2.22 to go in the second period. Elmira on goals from Carson Vance and Brandon Tucker. Had the lead on Carolina 2-1, whose lone goal in the game comes from George Holt. Faceoff will come back out to neutral ice, just favoring Elmira attacking ice near side. Shinkarik will take the draw against Cangelosi. Faceoff is won by Carolina. I'll pardon after the tie-up. Elmira was the one to eventually steal it away, and then they'll dump it into the zone. Mafus pokes it forward. A rolling puck captured by Tommy Cardinal as he'll kick it ahead, and here comes Cangelosi with it. Sweeps it across to Pashtuka. They're onside. At the near side dot, Pashtuka toe-dragged, lost the puck. He'll get help from Cangelosi as it rolls into the near corner. Taken away by Tommy Cardinal. Stick handles and backhands it up to the point. This is fate to Pashtuka. Winds and fires. It gets through. Passingham. White couldn't tuck in the rebound. Now White has it behind the net. 
Skates to the near side, face-off circle. Gives it up to Pashtuka, who is pinching. Nearly turned over, but Gonzalez can't get it out. Now Pashtuka holds, fires a wrister over the crossbar. Rebound, trapped by Passingham. He's got it on the side of the net. And Carter Shinkarik gets tied up with Zach White. Shinkarik returning to his old stomping grounds. He's an Elmira College kid. Played with Danbury last year, victimized Carolina on multiple occasions. 90 seconds remaining in the second period, 2-1, Enforcers leading the Thunderbirds. Face-off will be to the blocker side, pardon me, of Troy Passingham. Face off from the blocker side of Passingham. Couple of false starts. Panachik wants Shinkarik in the circle. Shinkarik will win it. Taken in the near corner as Carolina has it at the point. Bush Anderson with a long wrist shot caught in the chest of Passingham. 1.20 to go second period. 2-1 Elmira in the lead. Panachik from the blocker side of Passingham, near faceoff circle. Gets tied up with Shinkarik, who eventually just has to kick it back to Walters. His pass is intercepted. Panachik coming all the way from center to the far boards. Drops to Bacor. He gives Low Keplinger in front. One timer. Passingham got a piece of it. Big rebound. Shinkarik has it for Elmira. Sweeps it around the boards. This will be held on to by the Thunderbirds. A shot off Passingham's body will catch the glass and make its way all the way back out through center where Bush Anderson will take it for the Thunderbirds. 50 seconds to go in the second period. Pass to the near side, Panachik. Lays it ahead, Salak. Down the near wing, drop pass Panachik. His wrist shot gets tied up in the paraphernalia of Walters who tried to cover it himself, but it squirts through his legs and Passingham melts it down. Walters has to be careful there. If you cover the puck as a player, it's a delay of game. And if you close your hand on the puck in the goal crease, it's a penalty shot. 41.9 to go in the second period. 2-1. Elmira has the lead. Clean win by Fred Hine. Batita gives it up for Holt. Wrist shot through traffic. Passing him, finds it, makes the save. Another big rebound out in front. Batita's shot off a body. Rebound chance. Batita robbed by passing him. Elmira clears to center. Great chances for Carolina late in the second. May have one more. Hine pops it up off of Patterson, who just has to roll it back to Passingham. Patterson has the puck. He gets tied up with Sikos. Here's a shot from the point by Bowl. Blocked. Elmira clears it. This is going to be icing as Holt will race back and stop the clock with 9.2 seconds. Two one Elmira in the lead. Face off is won by Carolina. Here's a shot. On the way through, blocked by Atkins. And that is where the period will end. Elmira 2, Carolina 1 at the end of the second period. We'll pause for a quick commercial break here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Conveniently located at the corner of Ronaldo Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schoaf is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schoaf is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana. Gear up and practice at our pro shop and 9,000 square foot putting green. 
and enjoy a round of golf on our 18-hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. Learn more about us and our memberships at maplechasecc.com. Family owned and operated since 1938, Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher, enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days, and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville. What is a Thunderbird? It's toughness, grace, poetry in motion. It's a family, a brotherhood, a flock 4,000 strong. A Thunderbird is fierce, passionate, and never stops working. There's a championship pedigree here, a legacy to protect flock together. And we welcome you back to Elmira, New York. Drew Blevins with you on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. The Elmira Enforcers leading Carolina 2-1 at the completion of two periods. It was Carson Vance, not known for his scoring, who opened up the scoring in the hockey game. His goal came with 13.53 to go in the period. And then it was Brandon Tucker to make it 2-0 Elmira. And that was after Zach Quinn had made a bevy of just world-class saves. A very, very good outing for Quinn in his FPHL and Thunderbirds debut. Uh, but Tyler Jurich accrues a pair of assists in the period. Carolina found themselves down, needing an answer as we headed down the stretch in the second period, and it's George Holt to provide the spark for Carolina as he bangs home a slap shot from the far point. I'm not sure if Passingham ever saw it with the traffic of a big-bodied line in front. Uh, notably, it was Tommy Sikos who won the faceoff and then had his body in front of the net, and Seco stands at 6-1. Passingham Large-bodied goaltender, but unable to make the save there. 2-1 is where we stand at the end of the second period. Carolina overtook the shots on goal lead. They're out shooting Elmira 34-28. Zach Quinn has 26 saves on 26 shots. Troy Passingham has 33 saves on 34 shots. As Carolina is going to need a comeback effort to attempt and get the win here in this one. And I think one of the biggest things that you're going to look at now for uh, Carolina is what Andre Nitsch said in his pregame interview. It's gut check, it's grit, and it's passion. And for the Carolina Thunderbirds, I don't think they're being outplayed. I think they've had a couple of wheels fall off the wagon moments, but they've got to find the grit and determination to get things back to the way they're supposed to be. And sometimes that's easier said than done. But the roster's there. You're going to work with the guys that you've got. And we'll see what comes to fruition here as we start the third period. If you're Elmira, and we touched on it in the play-by-play -play in the second period, 
you're a team that wants to play from ahead. You're a team that knows you play better uh, from ahead. But the whole thing about the Elmira Enforcers is now this game plays into their strength. If they play a bunker-style defense, then what you're going to end up seeing is Carolina running into a lot of trouble just trying to get the puck across the blue line. That's where our Elmira makes their living. That's exactly how they want to play every single game. Carolina can't give the satis give them the satisfaction of them being able to play that way. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this is a game that's still a toss-up and up for grabs, and we'll see what happens in the final 20 minutes of this one. We'll pause for a quick commercial break. Elmira 2, Carolina 1 after 40 minutes of play here at First Arena in Elmira, New York. We'll be back after these messages. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. And we welcome you back to Elmira, New York, about nine minutes away from the puck drop in period number three, the Elmira Enforcers two, the Carolina Thunderbirds one. Time for one of our favorite radio segments that we'll share with you here on Thunderbirds TV, and that's our Ask the Voice segment. It's one of my favorites simply because whenever we get to come back in a break, sometimes you want to step away from the game at hand and talk about the game at large. If you want to have one of your future questions about hockey or the Thunderbirds answered on an edition of this program, all you have to do is email me at drewb, D-R-E-W-B, at carolinathunderbirds.com with your question about hockey, with your name and where you're listening from. Our first question tonight comes from Dale in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And Dale wants to know what my favorite Thunderbirds memory is from last season, and I cannot help but 
first of all say that there are so many memories from last year, my first full year with the team, but I'll always remember the very first game I did as a pro was right here in First Arena, and it was Peter Panacek skating down the far side boards on a breakaway, cuts to the middle, makes a move, and backhands it over the top of Troy Passingham. That was the very first goal I got to call as a member of the Carolina Thunderbirds broadcast team. And since it's your first, it's something I'll always remember. No matter where I go in my career, that will always be the first pro goal that I've called. So undoubtedly, that will always be the one that sticks out to me as my favorite memory. And our second question comes to us from Melanie, who is listening in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Melanie wants to know, what is the best way you know how to explain the offside rule? There, have, there could be essays, and I'm sure there have been essays written about how do you best explain offsides in the game of hockey. And the simple answer is take the red line and all of their markings out of the equation and just look at the blue line. If a team is attacking the net across the blue line, favoring the end boards, the puck has to make it across the blue line before any attacking player does. That's the simplest way that I know how to explain it, and I hope that resonates. That means you can dump the puck in across the blue line, then go chase it. If a player is carrying it, skating forward and stick handling, the puck will enter the zone before he does. But before anybody can go into the attacking zone, the net, the goal, excuse me, the zone where the net that they are trying to score on is, then the puck has to go across the blue line before any players can. Again, if you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, all you have to do is email me, D-R-E-W-B, at carolinathunderbirds.com, and we'll answer one of your questions about hockey in general or about the Carolina Thunderbirds on a future edition. 2-1 Elmira in the driver's seat of this one. We'll get you all prepped and ready to go for the third period after these messages. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Conveniently located at the corner of Rinalda Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schof is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schof is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Family owned and operated since 1938, Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher 
Enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville. We welcome you back to Elmira, New York, as we're nearly prepped and ready to go for third period puck drop between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Elmira Enforcers. Elmira leading the contest 2-1 against Carolina in this one. Plain and simple, one adjustment for each team. For Carolina, you've got to find a way to go on the attack, and you've got to find a way to go on the attack quickly. When things go downhill for Carolina, last season they were always able to find a way, especially in these tight games. With 20 minutes left of hockey, Andre Nitsch's conditioning protocol is going to be tested. Do the Thunderbirds really have what it takes to be the best conditioned team in the FPHL? We'll answer that question at the conclusion of this hockey game. And then for the Elmira Enforcers, this game plays to your strength. If you can sit back in the bunker and just play solid defensive hockey, Odds are you'll be able to skate to a victory, but it has to be a flawless defensive system, and it has to be executed to perfection. And if it's not, Carolina has skill on all three of their lines to be able to take advantage of you. That'll do it for us in the second period intermission. Third period puck drop is next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, Relax by our pool and cabana. Gear up and practice at our pro shop and 9,000 square foot putting green. And enjoy a round of golf on our 18 hole Ellis Maples designed championship golf course. Learn more about us and our memberships at maplechasecc.com. Conveniently located at the corner of Rinalda Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Schoaf is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Schoaf is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Curl Enterprises, by Maple Chase Golf and Country Club, offering the triad's best in recreational amenities, by Bud Light, discover the world's favorite light beer, and by Unifirst, we look good together. We welcome you back inside of First Arena in Elmira, New York. We do apologize for the change in graphic look if you're watching along with Thunderbirds TV as we've had to alter our feed. So what you are watching is the exact same video coming through the Elmira Enforcers YouTube channel. Unfortunately, there were some technical difficulties on the SDI cable coming back up here to the visitors broadcast booth. But nonetheless, we'll do our best to rescue it for you. And we've got video for period number three, the Elmira Enforcers 2 and the Carolina Thunderbirds 1. Peter Panachik will face off against Peavy, and Carolina will look to start the period, continuing on the momentum they just had at the end of the second. A good shot by Salak, but it ends up bouncing wide. Here's a shot through traffic from the point. Rebound scooped up by Keplinger. Keplinger sweeps it into the middle. He was looking for Peter Panacic, but the pass is deflected. And now Carolina will regroup here through center. This is Keplinger, who's run into on the play by Mitch Atkins, who scored 36 points in Danville last year. Altogether, wacky year for Atkins, who went to Danville and made a huge difference for that Dashers group, but was oddly enough traded from Elmira, and, and he was part of the team that went to the championship series in the 18-19 season. 
Shot ahead and into the zone as this one bounces off the glass and rolls around. George Holt touches it for Jacob Bowl. Sends it off the shin pad of Atkins as Holt comes back to the puck. Holt has the lone goal in this one for Carolina. Bowl ahead to Hine. Gives it back to John Batita, and he'll work out to the far side boards. Batita backhands it into the zone. Stopped by Passingham, who shoots it up the near wing to Tyler Jurich. Jurich was the biggest name moved at the deadline as he was acquired by Watertown. Elmira gave up five pieces just to get Jurich. They don't have any of the five left. Floated off the near boards, a round of Marcus Ortiz, and behind the net, Quinn has the puck for Carolina. On his forehand, shot it off Mafuz, who swept it into the middle of nowhere, and it's taken by Carolina. Three on three, they cross the attacking blue line. Batita into the middle, a one-timer by Hine, gets tied up in a couple of defensemen, and Carolina will set things up. Fate from the near point, dumps it low, taken by Sikos. Gives to Hine, who fanned on the one-timer. Now Fate feeds it down the kick plate to Tommy Sikos. He touches for Yuri Pashtuka. Backhands into space. Chopped down legally. And here come the enforcers. Skated ahead by Marcus Ortiz. Cuts to the middle. Deeks, and here he goes. Ortiz drops it into the middle, but unable to connect on the pass. Now White off Cardinal skate. So that nearly sprung him for a breakaway. Enforcers will take it. Through the middle, Cangelosi just pokes it up ice. Now wide for White. His wrist shot pinned on the catching side shoulder of Passingham. And that is where we will get a pause with 17-17 to go in the third period. Again, we do apologize as we have had to switch camera feeds for the time being here on Thunderbirds TV. You're watching the same feed that is going on on Enforcers TV across the way, but doing our best to provide what we can here at First Arena tonight. Very first road broadcast on Thunderbirds TV. And as always, you can catch us on our flagship station, WTOB, 980 AM, 96.3 FM. 17.07 to go as the puck hops out of play. Faceoff will be to the glove side of Troy Passingham. Now discussions being had between Cangelosi, White, and a referee and a linesman. Cangelosi turns it back for Stan Bacor. His shot through traffic just wide. Big rebound as it hopped up off the end boards and tried to make its way back to the front. This is taken by White, far face-off circle. He spins a wrist shot in and out of the glove of Passingham as it goes over the net. Tommy Cardinal causing a disruption back behind the cage. Scooped up by Peavy, who backhands it ahead looking for Brendan Hussey. Carolina has been all over the net, just trying to get one to go. White. Down the near boards, gets to the hash marks, fires a shot. Passingham had it, lost it behind the net. Salak toe dragging as he gives it off for Cangelosi. He's knocked from his feet, turns the puck over, but Elmira just has to float it back through the middle. Behind the net and stick handling is Ethan Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson played last year with Columbus, Battle Creek, and Danbury. Nearly turned it over, but on a second effort gets it to Panachik, who clubs it down the near boards into the zone. Picked up by the enforcers. They work it up the near boards. This is Tucker, who right now has the go-ahead goal. Floats one on goal, knocked away by the blocker of Quinn. Holt ties up his man in the far side corner boards. Gets some help from his defense partner, Jacob Bowl. A rolling puck, Tucker, touches low. Atkins lays it into the middle. Holt blocks away the pass. It goes back behind the net. This is Panachik with a good stick lift, but Atkins holds body position, wrap chance. Quinn seals it away. Salak has the puck for Carolina. He passes up the near boards to Keplinger. Keplinger trying to get on to it as Vance was taken down. No penalty as the puck is dumped into the zone off the stick of Tyler Jurich. 15-10 to go in the third period. This is Dominic Fate who has the puck for Carolina. Sweeps it out to the far side for Pastuka. Spins and turns up ice. Lays it to the near side for Fred Hine. Dumps it in. 
Gets tied up in the pad of Passingham. And now we're going to see a gathering of the clans at the goal mouth. Nothing wrong with going after the puck. Passingham thought he had kicked out the rebound, but instead it got pinned under his leg pad, and that lets you know that it was ever so close to sneaking under him, and that would have been the game-tying goal. I don't imagine we'll see any penalties come out of this. The puck is in the net, though. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification while they sort this out. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. So the faceoff will be to the blocker side of Troy Passingham, who had an innocuous dump in just get pinned under his knee. Carolina crashing, poked it into the net after the whistle, so no goal there. Shinkarik was barely onside, but the pass ran too far for him entering the attacking zone. Shinkarik's been everywhere, but at the same time has been held largely in check. Here's a headman look to Batita from Hine. Cuts to the near side faceoff circle as he enters the zone. Lays it ahead for Sikos. Making his move around of Secos is Gonzalez. Spanks it off the boards. Batita had it, lost it to Gonzalez. And now Elmira will send it down the ice. This is going to be icing against the enforcers with 14-18 to go in the third period. So the faceoff will come all the way back. Into Thunderbirds attacking ice with 14-18 to go in the third period. Goals by Carson Vance, Brendan Tucker, and George Holt. Elmira up 2-1. Cangelosi will take the draw here for the Thunderbirds. Cangelosi kicks it back to Bacor, sidesteps his man as he works down into the near corner. Bacor sends it off the side of the net. Zach White, who's had a good debut for the Thunderbirds. Turns with it here on his backhand. Works to the far faceoff circle. White gets creamed, but gave the puck to Tommy Cardinal. Moves it up to Bush Anderson, who fumbles for a moment, but is able to spank it down behind the net. Cangelosi ties up his man. We're going to get a penalty here. It's going to go against Elmira. As Zach White got tied up behind the net, this is going to be interference. Carolina is going to go a man up. Interference will be the call. It will go against Glenn Patterson with 13.50 to go in the third period. The call will be interference. Thunderbirds power play 0 for 2 on the night, but a chance to tie the game here. Ahmed Mafuz did not like the call, but it won't change it. Carolina wins the draw to Bacor. Now to Jan Salak. Feeds it down the far boards. Handled by Panacek. A tie up in front. Here's a one-timer from Keplinger. Kicked away by the goal stick of Passingham. Another tie up in front as Ethan Bush Anderson is camped out there. Keplinger fans on the pass. Carolina will have to regroup at center. Bacor floats it ahead to Bush Anderson. Ahead of the red line. He'll dump it in. Salak goes to get it. Passing him out of his net to play it. On his forehand around the boards, it'll make it out. Keplinger regroups to Stan Bacor, who takes it far blue line. Now gives it back for Josh Keplinger. Keplinger will turn up ice with it. Stick handles and looks ahead now to Jan Salak. Quick line change for Elmira. Salak with space. A wrister off of Walters. Rebound stays on Salak's stick. He gives to Bush Anderson, and he'll let it go up for Keplinger. Turns it down the near boards to Salak, who has it at the hash marks. Now back up near side point, Keplinger. Far point, Bacor. Slides it low around the kick plate. Panacha can't keep up to it. Walters unable to get it out as Keplinger holds the line. Josh Keplinger takes a couple of shoves in the back. Looks for Salak, who sweeps to Bacor. Back hands wide, far circle. Now back Keplinger near side. One timer. They score! Ethan Bush Anderson, the screen man in front on the one-timer, ties the game on the power play for Carolina. A game of unlikely goal scorers. Ethan Bush Anderson, 
his first of the season. He had four last year, and we're back square even here in Elmira. A power play marker with an assist from Keplinger and Peter Panacic. Carolina's power play converts. They're now one of three on the night. And Ethan Bush Anderson, the newest Thunderbird, is the man to put the puck in the net. Hine reaching after it. Puck is taken away from him as Elmira just has to dump it in. Now Jacob Bull takes it behind the Carolina net. Overtaken, Tucker moves it in front, they score! Elmira gets it right back, and it's Tyler Jurich. Jurich's third point of the night as Tucker finds him in front, and just as soon as Carolina tied it up, Elmira gets it back 32 seconds later. For Jurich, his fifth goal of the season. Team leader in the category. And you can't let 22 get open for a moment. Enforcers three, Thunderbirds two. As JT Walters skates it ahead for Elmira. Just chops it into the zone, Pashtuka. Turns away from Carter Shinkarik. Backhands it into space, taken away by Ortiz, who sweeps it to the far corner. Mafus leaves it into the middle. Intercepted, and here comes Zach White. White ahead of the red line. Stick handling to the near boards. Offside called as Tommy Cardinal was a step ahead of the play. 11.30 to go in the third period. 3-2 enforcers. Cangelosi will take the draw for Carolina. It's a clean win by Elmira as the enforcers work into the middle. Dumped in from the far side by Mafuz. Chance in front, Quinn with a poke check to knock it free. Up at the top, Vance, who has a goal in this game from the near point. Floats one on goal, Quinn kicks it away. Rebound makes its way to Zach White. Curry College product up the near side boards. Sends it out wide for Cangelosi, who had it far boards, entering the zone, but loses it. Now Marcus Ortiz gives back for Carson Vance in his own zone. Turns out to the far wing. Here comes Elmira. Thompson dumps it into the zone. Bush Anderson going after it. He locks up with Peavy. Thompson sweeps it near side. Matthews from the top of the faceoff circle. His shot tipped on goal. Big rebound. Thompson on the side of the goal. Knocks it off the goal facing. This is... Kyler Matthews, who punches it back to the far boards, and it's clubbed in by Thompson. Bush Anderson for Carolina. Now gives to Bacor. Looks up ice. Matthews gives to Hussey, who turns low. He was looking at Peavy. It's intercepted, and Bush Anderson will start the breakout for Carolina. Salak has it right up Broadway. Gives to Panachik on the near wing. Toe drags, fires a shot that Gino Mini blocked off his shin pad. Salak. Takes it in the far corner. He's got Panachik there to help. Makes its way up to the point. Pinching in is Jacob Bowl. That's six foot five of a Danish defenseman who comes crashing to the ice. Here's a long wrist shot. Turned out by the stick of Passingham to the near corner. Scooped up by Elmira, and Hussey is able to move it out to center. Stolen away. Keplinger has it for Carolina down the near wing. Salak on a one-timer. Knuckled in on Passingham, who is ready for it. Kicks it out, and Elmira will float it back out. Icing waved as this puck comes in onto Zach Quinn, and with Tyler Jurich pressuring, he'll be forced to cover. 9.36 to go in the third period. We'll step aside for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back as we go down the stretch in Elmira. Family owned and operated since 1938. Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher, enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days, and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville.
Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Curl Enterprises By Maple Chase Golf and Country Club Offering the Triad's best in recreational amenities By Bud Light Discover the world's favorite light beer And by Unifirst We look good together We welcome you back to Elmira, New York. Drew Blevins with you. 9.36 to go in the third period. Enforcers 2, or excuse me, Enforcers 3, Thunderbirds 2. 9.36 to go in the third. Face off to the blocker side of Zach Quinn. One by Elmira, pass to the front. Atkins got tied up by Batita, who finishes him in the far corner. Patterson lets it go up to the top. Held for a moment by Tucker, gives to Patterson. Off angle wrist shot, swallowed by Zach Quinn. Brandon Tucker had 42 points last year with the Enforcers. Had 19 points the year prior with the Evansville Thunderbolts, a team that has also had Fred Hine play for them. Off the draw, Jurich floats one on goal, caught and held on to by Quinn. Thunderbirds out shooting the enforcers, 42-35. And yet where it matters, Tyler Jurich has the go-ahead goal. He's got the puck here, near hash marks. Up to the top, Patterson fires through traffic, tipped on the way through, bounces wide of the near goal post, and is scooped up by Zach White. White will carry it ahead, right up Broadway. Toe dragging, got around one defenseman. This will be poked up and out of play, and will this be a penalty? I didn't think that puck hit anything on the way out. And is Elmira going to dodge a bullet? No, they will not. Delay of game will be the call against Glenn Patterson. So with 9.01 to go in the third period, Elmira's Patterson will sit for delay of game as that puck did not hit anything on the way out. And Carolina has a little bit of lady luck on their side as they look for their second power play goal of the night. John Batino will take the draw for the Thunderbirds. He loses it to his number opposite, Shinkarek, but he's unable to clear as Jacob Bowl has it. He gets tied up on the far boards. Brandon Tucker takes it from him and will wrist it the length of the rink. Would not surprise me in the least if Jacob Bowl is out there solely to provide a goaltender screen. Tommy Sikos starts his engine. Down the near wing, gets tied up. Walters takes the puck from him, sends it up to the point. Hine couldn't reach and grab it. So Elmira will kill more time. 30 seconds gone by in the Carolina power play. 8.30 to go, third period. Enforcers two, Thunderbird, er, Enforcers three, Thunderbirds two. I'll get that right eventually, I promise you. And Carolina will ice it. 8.25 to go in the third period. Andre Nitsch is going to leave the same power play unit out there. Carolina wins the draw. This is Bowl. Backhands to George Holt, who has it near wing. Cross eyes pass to Fred Hine. Carolina will have a clean zone entry. Hine with a slapper kicked away by Passingham. Bowl holds the line for the time being. Second effort will allow Elmira to clear it down the near boards. Quinn plays it up for Fred Hine. Carolina changing. Hine's pass runs too far for Zach White. The clearing attempt by Walters hit Shinkarek in the shoulder. So Carolina can go on the attack, but Elmira will have none of it as they'll wrist it all the way down. South of eight minutes to go now. Dominic Fate from behind his own net. Gives it out to the far side. This is Zach White. Cuts into the middle and gives to Joe Cangelosi. Cangelosi behind the net. Shoots it out wide for John Petita, who gives back to Cangelosi. Now Pastuka. To Dominic Fate between the faceoff circles. Out wide, Pashtuka holds, sidesteps his man. Wrist shot, passing him, kicks it away, and Elmira clears the rebound. 
great chance on the power play as Pashtuka was unable to get it through the pillows of Passingham. Now Pashtuka again, sidesteps his man. It's a three on two. Pashtuka down the far faceoff circle, rolls it in. He was looking for Tommy Cardinal who couldn't get to it. Now Zach White has it behind the net, cuts to the middle, poke checked, and back out to center it goes as Patterson exits the penalty box. South of seven minutes to go. This is Bacor. Gets around his man, but the puck ran too far for him. Skated back by the enforcers. Mafus on Bush Anderson. Backhands it to the near side for uh, nobody in particular. Salak took it away. Now Keplinger. Toe drag. Scores! Josh Keplinger ties the game for Carolina with 6.36 to go in the third period. Keplinger's first of the season. What a release. Product of Lawrence University. Had 16 points last year in a full season with the Macon Mayhem. And welcome to Winston-Salem. Carolina ties it. So a brand new hockey game now. Strap in, away we go. This will be dumped down and icing called against Elmira. Six thirty to go in the third period. Face off will be to the glove side of Passingham. Panachik will take it for the Thunderbirds. One forward chance in front. Keplinger couldn't get it to go. Now Salak toe drags fires. Punched out by Passingham. Salak gets to it. Now to Keplinger, up to the top. Bush Anderson with a rolling shot. Salak's got it, but it was knocked off of his stick by Hussey, who cannot get it out of the zone. Dumped low to Panachik, far corner. He works around the back of the net, turns and steers toward the middle. Taken away by Elmira. A little roller scooped up by Peavy, and he'll ladle it out of the zone. Moved up by Bacor to Panachik. It missed his stick. This will be icing against Carolina. Tomorrow night, we'll do it all over again here in Elmira. Thunderbirds and Enforcers. 6.35 pregame coverage starts at the Thunderbirds radio network. And then we'll have our live stream of the game here on Thunderbirds TV beginning at 7.05. Keplinger pokes it up ice, but it'll be taken away by the enforcers. Given away, Salak walks in, passing him, shuts him down. Passing him, comes up big after Salak had pickpocketed Kyle Gonzalez. And with 5.39 to go in the third period, you can tentatively feel what's going on. Here's Hine with a wrister. Scooped up by Elmira. As the rebound ended up bouncing all the way ahead. Chance in front, a little roller that goes wide of Zach Quinn. Tucker gives low. Jurich off-angle shot, paddled away by the goaltender Quinn. And Carolina is able to bounce it out. Atkins sweeps it into the zone. Quinn stops it back behind the net. Carolina will set things up from in back the goal. Holt carries it up for Carolina. Elmira. It's behind the net. Holt goes to get it. Lays it off the back of the goal in a crafty little fashion there. Sikos tripped up on the play. Ortiz has to send it far corner. Shinkarik picks it up, sweeps it into the middle. Take it away. And Carolina survives. Sikos down the far boards for the Thunderbirds. We'll dump it in and Gino Mini goes to get it back behind the net. 4.15 to go in the third period. 
Thunderbirds three, Enforcers three. Dumped into the zone, Dominic Fate goes to chase for Carolina. Kyler Matthews holds the line for Elmira, but gave it away to Fate who tried to clear, it bounces off of Everett Thompson. Sent low, near corner, Dominic Fate has it. To the far boards, Pashtuka. Is able to sweep it out, but now it's pitch and catch time for the Elmira defensive unit. 3.45 to go, third period. Dumped in, Cangelosi will go to grab it. Dominic Fate sends it across to Pashtuka. Moved ahead where it's taken by Vance. He gives it out to the far boards, and Jurich lays it into the zone. Dominic Fate after the puck here. Scooped up by Carolina's Cangelosi. He gives it to Fate, who tries to clear up the near boards. Got it around to Carson Vance. And now Brandon Tucker will have to go to chase for Gang Green. He sends it off the end wall. Keplinger picks it up, gives it into the middle. Panachik holds, wrist shot off the blocker side shoulder of Passingham as the puck bounces back out to center. Great A chance to take the lead for Carolina. Dumped into the zone, is going to get it here, will be J.T. Walters. Gives it to the far corner, be scooped up by Elmira, punched back by Bacor, but intercepted by Elmira, dumped in. Atkins got a piece of it at the red line, so icing will be weighed. Brandon Tucker sweeps it to the middle off the skate of Bacor. Moved back by Peter Panachik now. Panachik carries it in, drops for Keplinger. Toe drags, holds, a wrister, big rebound! Carolina can't get it to go, and now it's a two-on-one the other way if they hurry. Skated into the zone, here's a chance for the enforcers to Tucker! Great stop by Quinn! Throws out the leg pad and got a piece of it. To the far boards, enforcers will just lay it into the zone, gassed, new units both sides. Back and forth we go. As Carolina will have a look up ice. George Holt gives it wide for Tommy Seacoast. Cuts down the far board, slides it into the middle. Here's a chance! Knocked away by Passingham. He got a piece of it with his skate and keeps it out. Elmira ices it. Did not make the goal line in time for a whistle, so George Holt will settle back behind the net. 95 seconds remaining in the third period. We're all knotted up 3-3. Jacob Bowl pokes it ahead for Fred Hine, who gives to Batita, and Carolina dumps it in. Turnover! Slapped toward the net. Passing him, knocked it away. Another rebound off of a stanchion. Swept toward the middle. Batita, after the puck for Carolina, gives low Hine, looks into the middle for White. He curls around behind the net. 65 seconds to go, off angle shot, off passing him, Butita on the rebound, tried to tuck it, knocked away by Glenn Patterson. Kyler Matthews has the rebound and is able to bounce it around Dominic Fate. 55 seconds to go in the third period. Fate comes all the way back to his own end to get it. Moves it up for White, who lays it ahead for Tommy Cardinal. He's onside, drops for Cangelosi. His wrist shot was met stick to stick by JT Walters and it's out of play with 43.2 seconds to go in the third period. We're knotted up 3-3. Face off will be to the glove side of Troy Passingham. Cangelosi will take the draw for Carolina. He's got Tommy Cardinal and Zach White out with him. Yuri Pashtuka and Dominic Faith, the defenseman. The face off to the far circle and Carolina attacking ice. And Ahmed Mafuz calls timeout. We'll put this game on reset for you. It all started in the second period with Carson Vance scoring his first of the season with 13.53 to go in the period. And then it was Brandon Tucker who made the game 2-0 Elmira. You got worried if you were Carolina that this was gonna turn out in the most sour of ways. Then George Holt slams home a slap shot from the far point. Carolina would tie it. Ethan Bush Anderson in front of the net made it 2-2, but just 31 seconds after he scored, Tyler Jurich 
Gave Elmira the lead on a pass from Brandon Tucker. And then Josh Keplinger at 14-24 into the third period, ties it for Carolina on a quick wrister. Elmira has gone to overtime twice already this year. Didn't decide either of those games in the three-on-three. -three. Took a shootout. Elmira won one, lost one. Carolina in their first game of the season has not won a game in overtime since April 27, 2019. Jan Salak scored it 31 seconds in to win the Commissioner's Cup. Thunderbirds had seven games go to the extra session last year. All of them ended up in the shootout. Carolina went two and five in the breakaway competition. Cangelosi will take the draw for the Thunderbirds to the blocker side of Passingham. Elmira wins it. Behind the net, it's taken by the enforcers. Laid off the near glass, intended for Brandon Tucker. Pashtuka comes and chops the pass away. Cardinal diving for it, got it around of Peavy, but it bounces to Walters. Gives to Brandon Tucker with 25 seconds to go. To the near side, this is Glenn Patterson. He'll stick handle here. Elmira may be content to have one standings point as this one's dumped in but deflected and out of play with 13.9 to go in the third. May very well be destined for overtime. Joe Cangelosi is going to make the point that the faceoff will come to Carolina's attacking side of center because it's not where the puck was deflected, it's where the puck was shot from. Cangelosi is going to say it was shot from behind the blue line, and he's going to get the faceoff moved all the way down to the glove side of Troy Passingham. Cangelosi will take the draw against Carter and Carrick. Face-off will be to the glove side of Passingham. Cangelosi tried to get it to White, now moves it to the middle. Cardinal on a backhand, turned out by Passingham. Five seconds to go in the period, dumped all the way down, icing waved, and we are heading to overtime. What a hockey game, back and forth, momentum swings as we will head to three on three overtime for five minutes. We'll step aside for a quick commercial break. Overtime is next. Maple Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana. Gear up and practice at our pro shop and 9,000 square foot putting green and enjoy a round of golf on our 18 hole Ellis Maples designed championship golf course. Learn more about us and our memberships at maplechasecc.com. So we welcome you back to Elmira, New York. Five minutes on the clock, three on three overtime. The Carolina Thunderbirds and the Elmira Enforcers knotted up at three goals apiece. Carolina's goals by George Holt, Ethan Bush, Anderson, and Josh Keplinger. Elmira with goals from Carson Vance, Brandon Tucker, and Tyler Jurich. Jurich leading the way with three points. He is factored in on every goal in this game. Zach Quinn will tend to the net to our left. And Troy Passingham will head to the crease to our right. Keplinger, Salak, Bacor, the unit to start overtime for Carolina. For Elmira, it will be Glenn Patterson with Mitch Atkins. and Tyler Jurich. Salak will face off at center against Mitch Atkins. 
And it's a clean win for Elmira, and they'll have the first possession of the extra frame. From behind their net, a little shoulder fake as Atkins gives it back for Patterson, who moves it to Atkins. He comes down the near wing. Driving in, he gets tied up with Salak. Atkins switches to his forehand. Salak all over him. Salak staying with Atkins as they battle back behind the net for the puck. Atkins turns out with it. A backhand wrap chance. Shut down by Quinn. Carolina takes the puck. Stan Bacor will hold for the Thunderbirds directly in back of the goaltender, Quinn. 40 seconds gone by in overtime. Bacor awaiting the line change. Batita and Panachik will come out for Carolina. Batita will take the puck for the Thunderbirds. Looking up ice, Ahmed Mafuz there. Batita skates through it. It's a two-on-one, but the puck rolls too far. Taken away by J.T. Walters, who finds Ahmed Mafuz, the FPHL's all-time leading scorer. Will drop it behind him for Carter Shinkarek, the former Danbury hat trick. He cuts to the near wing. A wrist shot blockered away by Quinn. Shinkarek gets to his own rebound, gives to Mafuz, who backhands to J.T. Walters. Toe drags, but has it taken away from him by Peter Panachik. Panachik has it at the near wing, cuts to the far side, was looking at Jacob Bowl, but instead will cycle back behind the net. As Carolina gets off on a change, Tommy Sikos comes on. Panachik down the near wing, he enters the zone. Slides around Carson Vance and works behind the net. Leaves the puck for Seacoast to the near side faceoff circle. Wrist shot off the body of Brandon Tucker. Scooped up by Marcus Ortiz, the newest enforcer. He leaves it for Brandon Tucker, who has it between his defensive faceoff circles, and slides a pass to the near wing. Skated through the zone by Vance as he lays it ahead. Quinn collects it in the catching glove. Wanted to play it out, isn't allowed the opportunity. We'll get a whistle with 3.05 remaining in overtime. 3-3 the score. The faceoff will be to the glove side of Zach Quinn. Elmira will bring out the unit they started overtime with. Atkins, Jurich, Patterson. But Carolina wins the draw as Seco sweeps it to Zach White, who's had a really good Thunderbirds debut. Seco skates it ahead of the blue line between the faceoff circles. Throws a shot on goal, kicked away by Passingham. Seco skates to the near wing and has it. The top of the faceoff circle near side gives near point Pashtuka. Lays it into White. Deeks to the near side and has to pull away at the faceoff circle and await reinforcements. Leaves the puck for Yuri Pashtuka. Near side, backdoor pass, blocked away by Mitch Atkins. Pashtuka has the rebound to Fred Hine. Fires a wrist shot, passing him, says no. Big rebound in front, taken away by Tyler Jurich. He lays it into open space. The first man to it for Elmira is Glenn Patterson, the captain. Skates ahead of center right between the dots. Now cuts to the outside, looking for a lane. He's got a chance of the backhand, but he's shielded away by Carolina's defense. Now here's a chance, slid through the middle, taken away, Hine leads Panachik, a breakaway to determine the game. One-on-one, -on -one, Panachik, Deeks, slides at five hole, shut down by Passingham, who is injured on the play. Passingham struggling to get up. Elmira's Mafus has the puck. Begging your pardon, rather, it's Patterson. Skates quickly ahead. Backhand Shinkarek. A quick wrist shot. Fought off by the goaltender Quinn. Now a backhand pass to Panachik. One on one with Mafus back checking. Panachik hangs on to it. Will keep it. Holds, holds. Passing him way out of his net. Panachik. Rister just misses wide. 90 seconds to go in overtime. Hind into the middle. His pass goes over top the stick of Panachik. Around the end boards, as this will make it out of the zone. Everybody gassed. Hine gives to Panachik, who just doesn't have the gas to keep going. He's going to leave it in his own zone for Josh Keplinger. 70 seconds to go in overtime. Keplinger, Arister, caught by Passingham, and a quick whistle. And now we've got to keep an eye on the Elmira netminder. Passingham is clearly in pain. And that all started when he pushed over to make the save on Peter Panachik's breakaway that could have potentially won the game. Slight delay to make sure Passingham is okay and he's still bent over at the waist. 
will play on. Cangelosi to take the draw for Carolina. Won it a little too cleanly as he won it around of Yuri Pashtuka, who will retreat to come grab the puck. Yuri Pashtuka will look up ice. Skates it right up Broadway. Pashtuka between the faceoff circles, lifts it onto passing him, who seals it and covers. That's the 58th shot on Passingham. He's made 55 saves. Zach Quinn, no slouch either. 39 saves on 42 shots. 46 seconds remaining in overtime. Panachik Salak before the unit. Carolina looking for their first overtime win since 2019. Face-off will be to the glove side of Passingham. Panachik will take it for Carolina. 3-3 three, three the score. Shinkarik wins it cleanly back for Elmira. Glenn Patterson will hold it behind his net, gives to Shinkarik, fakes it and gets it back. Patterson, toe drags around the reach of Panachik. Starts his engine, poke check by Salak, but getting around of him is Atkins. Slides it into the middle, the pass was behind Patterson. Sweeps it below the goal line. Awkward chance in front, Quinn seals it away. Salak has it for Carolina. 20 seconds to go. Salak will leave for Bacor. 15 seconds to go in overtime. Bacor ahead of the blue line. Drops for Panachik. He holds, looking for a lane. Has Patterson, uh, has Passingham out of the net. And he slid it around to Patterson, but nobody home for the pass. Two seconds to go in overtime. Let's go to the shootout. Chances of plenty in overtime. Nobody able to convert. So we head to the shootout with a score, Elmira 3, Carolina 3. We welcome you back to Elmira, New York. First game of the season for the Carolina Thunderbirds will end in a shootout. The final score will be four to three. The question is, who's gonna win it? Carolina looking for their 20th all-time win against the Elmira Enforcers. They've only beaten the Danville Dashers more. 22 wins over Danville in the franchise's history. Elmira is the home team, will get the option on whether they wish to shoot first or last. Carolina, last one in a shootout against Menor in January. Last shootout game they were in was against Columbus on March 6th. And that was a loss after Oleg Shapitsin tied the game with 40 seconds to go. Troy Passingham, I thought, had suffered a rather serious injury, pushing over to make a save on Peter Panachik, but he'll stay in for the shootout. Carolina will go first. It'll be Zach White. White starts in quickly from the near side. Diggs! What a stop by Passingham! I don't think you'll see any better move from White as he went backhand, forehand, and passing him stretched out the legs. Mitch Atkins added to the roster earlier today as an active player will shoot in the bottom of the first inning for Elmira. This is Atkins who starts on the near side at the faceoff circle. Deekson holds for a wrister, kicked away by Quinn. 0-0 at the end of the first inning of the shootout. And now Fred Hine on loan from the Watertown Wolves will have his turn to shoot. 
Hine will bring it to the near side first. Cuts to the face-off circle now between the hash marks. His wrist shot kicked out by Passingham. And now the guy who has given Carolina fits, Carter Shinkarik. Shinkarik out of Langley, British Columbia. Looking to draw first blood in the shootout. Comes to the near side, holds for a wrister off the leg pad of Quinn. Got a piece of it with a glove side pad. Still 0-0 in the shootout. Up next for Carolina will be Josh Keplinger. This is the last shooter that has to be different for Carolina that can repeat any one after this one. Keplinger from the near faceoff circle, holds for a wrister, passing him, gets it with a pad. A goaltender's duel here. And Tyler Jurich will come up next. Scored three in a row to beat Columbus in the shootout. Jurich will try the opposite side, the far side. Works his way in, tries it low, and is sealed away by Quinn. So we go to the fourth inning. Peter Panacic scored the first goal of the 2019-2020 season on a breakaway in this building. Was robbed in overtime and a chance to make good here. Panacic carries the puck to the near boards and cuts into the middle. Holds for a wrister, scores! Pulls the trigger and pops the water bottle on Passingham and Peter Panacic Puts Carolina up in the shootout. And now here comes the old man of Ed Mafus. Mafus, the acting head coach of this team, all time FPHL leading scorer from the far side. Deeks in, holds and misses the net high and wide. And Carolina can win it right here. Jan Salak led the team in goals last season with 29. He'll go in on Passingham. Two veterans of the league squaring off. Salak to the far side to win it. Cuts back into the middle, holds. Digs to the backhand, poked away by Passingham. You wanted drama? Here it is. Tyler Jurich will have the final shot of the regulation portion of the shootout. Zach Quinn in his Carolina Thunderbirds debut can win it with a save. Jurich starts to the near side this time, carries it in with speed, Deeks lifts, off the goal pole, no! They score! Off the back bar and out! What a move by Jurich. So into the sudden death innings, John Batita will take the shot for Carolina. Picks up the puck on his forehand, works to the far side, cuts it between the hash marks, test passing ham low, kicks out the glove side leg pad and kicks it away. So Tyler Jurich will have the chance to win it for Elmira. Jurich, fresh off of his 200th career goal. A maestro in the shootout. Between the hash marks, holds deep to the backhand and scores! Elmira will take the bonus point as Tyler Jurich wins it in the shootout. Elmira will improve to two Zero, two, and one. They move ahead to 11 standings points. Carolina will fall to zero, 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 and one, but they do have the standings point, and they will move into third place in the FPHL, hopping over the Port Huron Prowlers. Your final score from Elmira, New York, the Elmira Enforcers four, the Carolina Thunderbirds three in the shootout. We'll be right back with our Carolina Thunderbirds post-game show after these messages. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Conveniently located at the corner of Ronaldo Road and Northwest Boulevard, Salem Smiles and Dr. Sarah C. Shove is the preferred orthodontist of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Dr. Shove is a Winston-Salem native and a trusted name in orthodontics since 1992. So whether you're on the ice or in the stands, trust your teeth to Dr. Smashmouth and her team at Salem Smiles. Well, we welcome you back here inside of First Arena in Elmira, New York. The Carolina Thunderbirds fall in the shootout to the Elmira Enforcers by a final count of 4-3. to three. Tyler Jurich scores two of his three attempts in the shootout. And I'll be interested to go back and have a look at the replay of the one he scored in the fifth inning as it hit the corner. You heard the medal, and the referee had the perfect vantage point from that far side corner. He said back bar and out. And it always seems like when these two teams play, it comes down to a little bit of controversy. And what fun is a rivalry if it doesn't? Carolina falls in their first game of the season, but they do pull out a standings point. We'll set this game on reset for you. It all started in the second period with Carson Vance scoring his first goal of the season to make it one nothing. Brandon Tucker would bury a feed from Tyler Jurich on the two-on-one to make it 2 nothing. Carolina looking just to rescue the effort. George Holt blasts home a slap shot from the far side point. That made it 2-1. to one. But then Elmira would stave off chance after chance for Carolina, especially down the stretch uh, into the second period. And I, I was very interested to see how Carolina would respond. They get a chance on the power play that Ethan Bush Anderson capitalizes on. But then the Thunderbirds have a defensive breakdown behind the net. Tyler Jurich scores to make it 3-2, just 32 seconds after the game was tied by Bush Anderson. And then we went for a while where Carolina looked like they were going to make the comeback but couldn't get the puck in the back of the net. And finally, Josh Keplinger just fires one that beats passing him cleanly on the far side. That made it 3-3. Both teams had chances down the stretch, including a plethora in overtime. Peter Panachik, most notably on the breakaway, was robbed by Passingham, who sprawled out and looked like injured something on that play, but was obviously well enough to continue on. He'll have the win his third of the season. Zach Quinn suffers the shootout loss. He falls to 0-0-1 in his FPHL debut. Scoring in the shootout for Carolina, Peter Panachik, but Tyler Jurich scores in the fifth and sixth inning, one to keep the shootout going, one to win it for the Elmira Enforcers, who now have taken two straight against Carolina, dating back to December of 2019, both of them coming in the shootout. We'll pause for one more commercial break. Coming back, we'll get you all teed up for tomorrow's contest. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Family owned and operated since 1938, Mustin and Crutchfield Food Market in Kernersville is the place to find your favorite homemade foods. Sample the finest cuts of meat from our on-site butcher, enjoy a glass bottle of soda like the old days, and go home with a tub of our famous homemade pimento cheese. Come see us at 245 North Main Street in downtown Kernersville. Carolina Thunderbirds Hockey is brought to you by Walkabout Flooring, by Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company, try our vanilla coffee porter, now in special edition Thunderbirds cans, by American Water Damage, you relax, we rescue, and by Sharp Stone.
For the final time this evening, we welcome you to Elmira, New York, inside First Arena. The Carolina Thunderbirds fall in the shootout to the Elmira Enforcers by a final count of 4-3. to three. Carolina had chances to win the game, plain and simple, and it wasn't a bad effort altogether, but Elmira did a superb job of capitalizing on Carolina's errors, and that's something the Thunderbirds are going to want to clean up tomorrow. Carolina falls to 0-0-0-1 on the season. Elmira advances to 2-0-2-1. The enforcers will remain the top of the FPHL, both by points and by win percentage. Carolina will hop Port Huron as a shootout or overtime loss counts as a third of a win. So the Thunderbirds are now in third in the FPHL for this regular season. And I think we're going to learn a lot about this Thunderbirds team tomorrow, about what they're made of. This one's going to leave a sour taste in their mouth. Plainly because this was a game that was there for the taking. And even in the third period when they were trailing, Carolina looked like the better team. They created more shooting. They did what they wanted to do, but they just couldn't convert and put pucks in the back of the net. And a lot of that has to do not necessarily with the opportunities they created in the third period, but the ones that weren't created at all in the first. It wasn't a good start to this game for Carolina, and they had to make the adjustments in the second and third period and while Carolina didn't lose the game in the first, they didn't go on the attack and win it in the first either. And getting that full 60-minute effort is going to be something that Andre Nitsch wants to get out of his team. And I'll be anxious to see what he has to say coming up in his post-game comments. The positive to take away from this is Zach Quinn is for real. He did everything he could to keep Carolina in this one, made a handful of just simply spectacular saves. And I think you're going to see a lot more of him uh, coming up in the near future. Tomorrow, I would expect to see Nick Modica get the start. He was 2-0-0-2 last year with Carolina in his four pro games after finishing his collegiate career at SUNY Cortland just up the road a pair. But overall, a solid hockey game, highly entertaining, drama-filled, and what's a good rivalry game when you don't have that? That'll do it for us here this evening. The final score one last time. The Carolina Thunderbirds fall to the Elmira Enforcers 4-3 in the shootout. Until next time, I'm Drew Blevins. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Until tomorrow with Puck Drop at 7.05 p.m. and pregame coverage on Thunderbirds Radio at 6.35 p.m. Have a wonderful evening.